Okay, we're going to start working on the leaves, the comma strokes, and the stem of the flower. I'm going to put the stem in first using my liner brush, and I'm loading it in my light avocado. Again, extra water in that paint and brush, so I'm going to tip the tips of my bristles in a little bit of water, come back to my puddle, and mix it in. You need that extra moisture in your brush to pull a nice fine line. So here's my flower. I'm just going to stroke that stem in. The two strokes right underneath the flower are quite large. I don't usually like to use a filbert brush to do this because I like a brush, here's my short liner again, where all the bristles are about the same all the way across. On a filbert brush, you're kind of angled down a little bit, and sometimes you get a little bit of a feathered stroke because of that. But since these strokes are so large, I decided that was what I was going to use on this. So I'm wetting my brush as normal for these two big strokes here right underneath my flower. I actually didn't follow along the pattern exactly. You can see this one goes underneath the flower. And this one is straight. I didn't want to do it that way. I wanted to just be able to pull some nice comma strokes. So I chose to alter the pattern at this point. So on these two big strokes, and there's not a whole lot of color difference, but I loaded my brush again from the side of the puddle with the light avocado. I'm going to side load into Aloe by Deco Arts, one of those new colors again. I'm blending these two colors on my palette. Now, a couple things to remember when you're pulling strokes. Your pattern is just your guide. You do not have to fill in the entire area. In fact, on my pattern, you see the lines around the entire stroke. When I trace my pattern, I trace a line through the center of the stroke and put the cap on so I have a general idea of the size of the stroke. You do not have to completely fill that area in. So, again, my brush is loaded in light ivory, side loaded into aloe. I want my light color toward the top of the stroke. I'm going to set my brush in here and wiggle it a little bit to make it a little wider at the top and I'm going to pull my stroke through just following that line. I'm going to add more paint to my brush. So this time I'm going to pick up light avocado on one side and the aloe on the other side. Coming back to the same place where I blended before. Again, so I don't lose moisture. Again, I'm keeping the aloe at the top of the stroke. And this one I did trace in straight, but I don't want to do that. So I'm going to lay my brush down and curve. You know, I apologize. Bear with me. I really need to turn my palette to do this stroke. It's just not easy for me to do it this way. So I'm just taking it off. Going to add a little more moisture to my brush and my water. I'm going to come back here and blend again so I have that extra moisture. I'm going to turn my surface, again the aloe, at the top of the brush. Lay my brush down at the top of the stroke and pull in. For the other strokes, I'm going to switch over to my Josanya number six short liner. We're going to do some color step strokes. So for these strokes, I am loading in my light avocado. And 
and I'm going to pick up a little bit of the Williamsburg blue and a little bit of winter blue in my brush. So that's kind of my bird base mix. I'm going to mix those colors together in my brush. And this color is going to go on the next strokes next to these large ones. So I'm going to lay my brush here and stroke next to that first one I put in. Running out of a little moisture, I'm coming over to my water, tipping in, coming back to my same puddle here and mix that together. Then I'm going to add the stroke again next to my big center one on this side. Again, turning my palette so it's easier for me, or my surface I should say, so it's easier for me to pull my stroke. Lay my brush. Again, I'm going to wiggle to get it a little bit wider and pull that in. For my next strokes, I'm going to pick up a little bit more Williamsburg Blue in my brush. I'm going to come back to this same puddle and mix together because I want to subtly change this color so I'm not cleaning my brush out. I need more moisture tipping the tips of the bristles in my water coming back to this puddle to mix it in. So now I'm going to add my next strokes. One here. Pick up a little more paint. Again turn my surface so it's easier for me to pull my stroke and add the next one. For that last stroke here going to go back to my paints. I'm picking up more Williamsburg Blue, coming back to that same puddle again. Again, I just want to subtly get this darker. Mixing together. I'm going to add that last stroke in this series. So you can see when we're all done, they're getting a little bit darker as I keep adding that color to it. And then what I did, I decided I needed a little bit more interest on these strokes. And you can do whatever you want. I added some strokes right on top of those strokes that I just pulled in. So for example, I'm just going to give you a couple examples here. Um, let's add a little bit, a stroke with some summer squash. to the two large strokes and just pull that through the center. On the green strokes, maybe some aloe. And again, I'm just picking some colors that are on my palette. So I'm going to add an aloe stroke to the center of these. It's not my best work, so please don't shoot me. Let's add blush pink to the next strokes. So let's say here, oops, and here. And maybe I want to add, and I'm not looking at my piece, I'm just adding what I want to at this point. So you can do whatever you want. Or you can do what I did in the first place. Let's add a winter blue stroke to this bottom one. On top of the summer squash stroke, I'm going to use my number three short liner. I'm going to pick up some pink chiffon and I'm going to add a smaller pink stroke on top of that summer squash. Again, this just brings all the colors that I've been using on my piece together. Now 
did basically the same technique or absolutely the same technique on the strokes that are on the sides here and at the top of the flower. I just changed the strokes at the top of the flower. I'm going to go through this and just show you one set so just to get this a little bit fresher in your mind. Um, but you can read the directions to see what colors I used. I'm going to show you these strokes here right now. These I use some lighter colors and again if you just read the directions you will see um, what colors I used. So one more time I'm going back to my Josanya number six short liner. I'm going to pick up again my um, light avocado and a little bit of Williamsburg blue and a little bit of the winter blue because I'm trying to mim up my bird color. I want to lighten up. If you have some of that bird base mix left, that's all you need to do is mix that in with the green. So this is going to be my first stroke in this series. And that's usually your first stroke is the largest stroke in that group. To do the one underneath, I'm going to add a little bit more um, Williamsburg blue to my brush. I'm going to come over here and mix this together to make it just a tiny bit darker. Again, turning my surface to make it easier for me to pull the stroke. Lay my brush down and pull through. Now I want the stroke on the top to be a little bit lighter. So now I'm going to clean my brush and my water. I'm going to come over here to this puddle where I first mixed up my color, which was the light avocado. I'll pick up a little more of that, a little bit of the Williamsburg blue, a little bit of winter blue, and my brush and mix those together. That was the first color that I put down on that large stroke. So now I want to lighten it up just a little bit. So I'm going to come over here and pick up a little bit of aloe. It's another one of those new Deco Art colors. I'm going to mix that here on my palette. And then I'm going to stroke that one in. You can see, so this side we got a little darker. Up here we get a little bit lighter. Once again, you can just read the directions. I did add um, aloe to the one stroke some blush pink to another stroke. Um, you could add, I think I added aloe here, you could add some summer squash to that one, or you could even use the spicy mustard, whatever color suits you. I want to go over here to show you the strokes that I did on the side of the box. Again, they are color st step strokes, but I want to walk you through one series here and uh, just so you get it fresh in your mind. So once again, I'm going back to my number six short liner and I'm picking up Williamsburg blue in my brush and the winter blue. Or again, if you have your bird base mix still there, that's the color that I used to do my first stroke, which again is going to be the longest stroke in the series. So, I'm just going to lay my brush down and pull through the stroke. To make it darker, again, I'm picking up Williamsburg Blue, coming over here someplace else on my puddle and mixing that together and adding my next stroke. To do the next stroke, more Williamsburg Blue, now that's pretty much Williamsburg Blue right there. So I want to keep changing this color, so on the dark side I'm picking up Magenta in my dirty brush, coming back to this same puddle and mixing these colors together. You see I'm mixing it really, really well through the whole brush, not just the tip of the brush. 
going to add the next stroke. I'm going to pick up a little more magenta in my dirty brush. Coming back to this puddle, again, mix, mix, mix. This is what makes these colors change subtly. Picking up that little extra and continuing to mix in that same puddle. You might note that I am trying to pull all my strokes to the same point. If I want, I can add one more. Let's add one more and pick up some more magenta. Come back to my puddle. Mix, mix, mix. I love this color. I just think it is so pretty. I'm going to add just one more stroke to that series. Cleaning my brush out. I'm going to pick up more of my Williamsburg Blue and my Winter Blue in my brush. Again, I want to get that mix that I used for the bird and that was the first stroke that I put in this series. Right here. So now I want to start getting a little bit lighter with my strokes. So with my bird mix in my brush, I'm going to pick up a little bit of winter blue, mix it here on a separate puddle. Again, mix it really well through the whole brush. I'm going to add, start adding lighter strokes next to that center one that I did. I'm going to pick up a little bit more winter blue in my brush. Come here and mix it together. Add one more stroke. Now I could add a little bit more winter blue, but I'm going to go up here and start using the sugared peach. So I'm picking up a little bit of that in my brush, coming back to my same puddle again, mixing this real well in my brush, and add my next stroke. I'm going to pick up again a little more sugared peach. Once again, I'm mixing it in my puddle. And add one more stroke. Let's do just one more. So more sugared peach. Mix, mix, mix. And let's add that last stroke in there. So again, you can see this was my first stroke. On this side, they got progressively darker. On this side, they got progressively lighter. Um, you can do whatever you want. Once again, this is your piece. What I did on mine was on the ones that were, like at the top of the box, I had more light strokes. And the ones on the bottom of the box, I had more dark strokes. So it's really kind of up to you. You can do them all the same or whatever. I then used my stylus and put some magenta dots in between the sets of strokes. I also lined here with magenta at the top and the bottom. The top and the bottom bases, if you will, lips of the side of the tin are light avocado. And then to do this edging, on the bottom or, or the side of the lid, I used this Mezzaluna brush by Dynasty. I just found this brush and I really love it. I'm using it dry. I picked up a little bit of the magenta in the dry brush. And you, you want to take the excess out. You don't want to have too much paint in your brush. And then I just ran it along the side of that lid and then kind of let it spill out here onto this top. Just again to give a little bit more interest to the piece. I chose to leave this piece as it is at this point because I wanted you to see all the beautiful colors that we used. Again, the new DecoArt colors. I just think they are so super yummy. 
However, I thought I would give you a quick lesson on how I antique my pieces. I have, you can probably see, I already have my, my gloves on because I use oil-based products and all of those are very toxic, so I don't want to get any of that into my skin. The other thing you're going to need are some soft cloth. I like to use pieces of my husband's old undershirts or you can use Viva paper towels. Viva are the only ones that are lint-free that I have found. And again, um, a man's undershirt is lint-free, so that makes it perfect to use for antiquing. The other thing you need is some kind of an oil painting medium. My personal preference is Norwegian painting medium. You can also use any other kind of oil painting medium. I also like the Windsor and Newton blending and glazing medium for oils. And you also need some burnt umber oil paint. So what I do is, I always have two, two um, pieces of, of cloth ready. On one piece, I'm going to, oh, I should say, I used to varnish, spray varnish my pieces after I finished painting them and removed all the pattern lines. That, that's key too. You need to make sure all your pattern lines are removed because anything that goes underneath the oil is just going to stay there. But I found using the varnish on it made my surface too slick and uh, my paint was just sliding around. So I don't add any kind of spray varnish to my surface at all anymore. So again, I'm going to take my rag and I'm going to put some of the painting medium on it. And I'm going to apply this. I'm just going to do the top for you right now. So I'm putting this on the entire lid of the box. Then I take my oil paint. And especially this is small, so I'm just going to squeeze a very small amount out here onto my rag. And I turn it inside out so my oil paint is sandwiched in between where I put the medium on. And then I'm going to put it on my piece. I know, I know. You go, oh my goodness, look how dark that is, but don't worry. So I'm rubbing this on my entire lid. Then with my clean rag, I'm going to start wiping it out. You see, it just kind of tones your colors down without getting rid of them. Now what I like to do is take most of the color, not most, but more of the color out of the center and then let the edges be kind of shaded. So I have my oil paint here and then to blend it in I just put my finger inside my rag and I'm gently going in a circular motion to blend that oil paint in. If you do it in a circle, it keeps it a little softer. I could just pull it in, but you see that it just doesn't give me a nice, nice finish. That's why I like doing it in a circular motion. It's, it makes it a little more blended if I do it this way. So I'm going to do that all the way around. Take a little bit more of this paint out of here. So I'm just pressing a little harder. Now let's say I, I want a little bit more color there. I'm going to take my dirty rag again where I have my oil paint. I'm going to add some extra color along this edge. Come back with my clean rag and work that in. So you can see the difference between the top and the sides. Again, it doesn't totally cover everything up. It just deepens the colors. Personally, I think it makes it richer. But again, it's your piece and you need to do what makes you happy. So let's work on the sides of this box real quick. Again, I'm going to go back to 
my one rag. I'm going to put some of the painting medium. And by the way, if you don't, you can't find the Norwegian painting medium or the Windsor Newton for oil. You can certainly use Orderless Terp. It's not my favorite thing to use. I just think, for me at any rate, the painting mediums are smoother than the Terp is. But you can use Terp instead of the mediums, a burnt umber oil paint, and just do the exact thing that I'm doing. So here again, I'm just rubbing my medium on my entire piece all the way around. I'm going to put the oil paint on the area where I have the medium. I'm going to add a little bit extra because this is a little bigger area here. Again, I'm folding it inside so it's not so stark when I first put it on. And again, I'm applying this to the entire side of my piece. Make sure I get it inside all those lips and creases. Otherwise that color is just going to jump right out at you. Keep moving my rag around so I find where my oil paint is. And getting inside these creases. And you see how dirty my gloves are already. This is why I like to wear gloves and not just have my hands there because I don't want this toxic paint getting into my system. Okay, I'm going to go back to my clean rag. And again, I'm just going to start rubbing out. Just move that paint around, basically, is what you're doing. And taking the excess out. Just going to go all the way around this time, since I have a bigger area. If my not removing that paint well enough for me, and I think Jesus is starting to... Not really dry, because it's going to take this oil paint a lot longer to dry than it is acrylic paint. But I can take a little area here, if I have kind of a clean area, with just the, the medium on it. See, that's starting to lighten up that center area. I can remove the oil paint with that extra bit of the medium. And let's say you put the antiquing on and you absolutely hate it. Just put some of the medium on your clean rag and you can remove all that antiquing. I'm going back to my clean rag now and move, kind of moving this together and blending it all together. Right now, I'm mainly just trying to get the excess paint off. Hope I'm not making you seasick as I'm rubbing and scrubbing here. And once again, if I decide I want to add, which I usually do a little bit more, of the antiquing um, at the top and the bottom of my sides, then I can add that in here. I'm just going to do a small area here for you so you can see and again kind of do a circular motion to try to blend that paint into the background. And you can see that just darkens it up just a little bit. Now right in here where I have this little extra, I just can't seem to get in there with my fingernail. 
I'm going to reach over here and grab an old brush. I'm going to pick up just a tiny bit of the oil paint on my brush. And I'm going to dab that in here. So I don't have any of those areas showing where there is no antiquing. Because that's going to scream at you and draw your eye right there. And you don't want that to happen. So again, I'm just going to add some extra oil paint in those areas. And then come back with my rag. I think I need a bigger rag. And scrub that paint in there. So that's not screaming at me now. Yeah. So once again, this is not totally covering up what I just did. It's just making it a little darker, a little bit richer. And I keep changing this rag, moving this rag in my finger as it keeps getting dirty. I try to move it around a little bit to get a little cleaner area. You do kind of have to worry how you're holding it, depending how wet your piece is. You might end up with fingerprints. So I always make sure I look at my piece several times over to make sure I don't have any fingerprints in it. I do use spray varnish on tin pieces, especially something round like this. It's just too hard to brush varnish it. I may play with that a little bit more after we say goodbye, but again, here is my piece with the antiquing on it. Now, before you varnish, you either need to let this sit for at least three days for that oil paint to totally dry, or again, take it out into a well-ventilated area and you can spray it with this Liberty Matte Finish. comes in this purple can. That will help set the paint, and then after that is dry, you can go ahead and use your DecoArt spray varnish. I like using the satin spray varnish, but whatever is um, to your liking is what you need to do. Okay, that's it. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you enjoy this project. If you get this painted and you post it on Facebook, please make sure that you tag me so I'm sure to see it. And if I can answer any questions for anyone, please feel free to contact me at bbunsey at calicogoose.com. Until next time, have a good day. Bye now.